Hi, I'm Digital Visions and this is the first part of the flames tutorial. In this first part we'll deal with a small flame of a match. Um, it is also will be suitable for a candle or a gas stove. Okay, I'll just show you quickly what we got in the set here. We got the match, which is basically a cube with a sphere parented to it and the emitter itself parented to the sphere. This is in case you grab hold of the match and move it in the scene. Then the flame will move with it. And we got the environment and a friction. Okay, we'll scrap this one and start a new one. Okay, what I've done here is I uh, modeled the matchstick and applied the materials. The basic materials you'll find in the Cinema 4D library. Um, if you're not sure how to create that, you will find at the end of this tutorial a short clip showing you how I modeled and applied the materials and met the selection as well here. Yeah. Okay, we'll start by creating an emitter. Drag it to the head of the matchstick and change its rotation to 90 degrees so it face upwards check that the particles going upwards okay as you can see the basic emitter by default is set to emits randomly 10 particles across its surface <clears throat> because in this particular flame we want a one single flame what we need to do is to reduce it to a one line to do it you go to the attributes emitter tab and on the X and Y Take it down to zero and make sure the angle horizontal and vertical is zero. So what you basically get now is just one long line of particles, which if you look back is going as far as you can see. We'll soon adjust that. So that's the start. Now we need to affect these particles by um, adding the friction that will slow the speed of particle going up as you can see okay now the particles have been slowed down we also want to reduce their lifetime so they don't reach these enormous distances and height. So basically if we go to the emitter attributes and particle tab, you can see the uh, by default it's set the lifetime to 600 frames. Um, and if you start reducing it, you'll actually see visually here that the particle's height As you can see now, it's reducing. So, say so keep it on about 36. It all depends what kind of flame you've got and what height you want to achieve. So remember, by adjusting the lifetime, you're also controlling the height of your flame. Uh, we'll go into variation here later on, but you can set that straight away to 10 for each. 
don't think we'll have any effect immediately on this. And um, the other factor we need to achieve this kind of um, slight draft in the room where the flame might sway a little bit from left to right or if you want to add um, wind blowing from one side um, for that we need the wind object it's normally pointing already to the Z which is what we wanted to point but the indication is here this arrow here the yellow arrow showing the direction of the wind if you turn it on now you will see it's blowing the flame just to one side and I want to create the effect of the flame slightly slowly swaying from side to side you need to have at least 120 frame on your timeline for this and what you need to do is basically reduce the strength of the wind to start with so it's only curving a little bit and then adjust and tweak those settings here the turbulence frequency and the turbulence percentage there and you will see straight away that we start getting some kind of swaying effect see the flame now is going to the left and if you adjust the frequency so you have to do the adjustment here to your requirement but you can see already the, the flame the tip of the flame at least and that you can control by raising or lowering the wind where exactly you want the bending of the flame I'll keep it there where the tip is you can see it's going to the left and to the right you can adjust that to your precise requirement See left and now right and as you reduce the speed that will um, also reduce the speed that is moving from side to side so these are the adjustments for that in this particular tutorial I won't give you any precise settings because what I want you is to actually experiment with this I find myself it's the only way to actually understand how this work so we got we already got a bit of movement on top which I'm happy with okay we leave that and now we go to the actual material and for that we need to bring in environment object go down to the bottom left file shader and bring a pyro cluster material file shader and pyro cluster volume tracer the volume tracer will apply into the environment and the material we need to apply to the emitter now double click on the material leave um, for the time being all the rest of the setting here as they are go straight to shape and that's important now because for this material in particular you actually want to see the shape of it because we want to try and achieve the classic teardrop shape for the flame and the only way you can do it here is by going to shape and down at the bottom you see a preview just check the preview and immediately you can see the shape of the actual material now this got the opposite shape that what we want because we want the tip of the teardrop to be on top okay so the way to achieve that there is um, setting here that will change the shape I'll show you it will change change the shape change the shape of your material sideways 
in all three directions. But this is not really suitable for our particular example. So we'll bring it back to one. Make sure you're on one because if you go lower than one, it probably will disappear altogether. So um, leave it at one for the size. And although this is the, roughly the shape we want, this will not be suitable for this particular setup. So leave it all on one for the time being. And I'll show you how to change the shape. Basically go to age, make, su make sure use age effect is ticked, checked, make sure it's checked. And then what we need to do is the one on the left you see has been grayed. Turn it into black and swap the black on the left with the white on the right. And straight away you can see it's already changed. Now it's pointing up to the top. And by sliding the white towards the, the black tab, and vice versa, you can adjust the shape as your requirement. You can see it's gone. If you leave it somewhere in the middle at the moment. And now if you play the animation, you can see it start getting the shape we are after. If you go back to shape now, because we what we got at the moment is far too big for the size of the match. Go to regis and reduce it to your requirement shape and as it changed the shape you can see it also become more pointed at the top instantly you got the teardrop shape which is the flame we are after and you can see the effect of the wind slightly swaying it from side to side Plus, if you increase the timeline to say 150, you'll be able to see more of the swaying of the flame from side to side. Okay, so now we actually achieve the shape we want purely by adjusting the regis gradient colors, the shape size. and the emitter lifetime. So remember, those are important setting for this flame. Now, if you do a quick render, you will see that it's, there's nothing there, basically, because we, we use the default pyrocluster material, which is usually white. This would be a good way of learning and understanding how these um, power cluster material work. So we will use the basic material that's given, which is white, and it's, as you can see, absolutely nothing down, like what we want. And we'll start giving the colors here, basically. On the left, we'll adjust the first one to be almost white. And then by pressing Control and dragging that tab will produce another one which will give a slightly orangey color. The one on the end will um, duplicate and give it a darker orange and right, right at the end will keep us black. We'll adjust them in a minute, just have a quick look, do a quick render, and now we start getting some kind of results of flame, but again, it's not really um, in any way um, similar to what a match flame will look like. Um, the way to achieve that is at this stage, just stop here. Don't don't set these too too close to what you want because you will not get it unless you go to age. And down here where it says color, start giving the same colors. 
similar colors to what you did on the globals an orange a yellow and you soon see the effect and a black they don't have to be as precisely as the other one and if you adjust those and now do a render you now say you start getting warmer colors um, the shape the noise is what creates these shapes here is still not as we want it so we will adjust that in a minute the other thing you need to do as you can see um, it's emitting now I think it's 10 particles go back to the emitter yeah it is um, change that to at least 30 particles for birth editor and birth rate render and now if you play it you'll have a more a smoother transition there between the particles which is what we want for this particular flag we leave it at that we can also change the the speed probably to 780 that also will affect the shape of the particles as you can see there We'll take the speed variation and lifetime variation off now the time being. Now we got a smoother you see a much smoother shape. It's getting there. Okay, we leave that and got to the noise because as you can see here we got this noise effect which we don't know. We'll get closer, you'll see what I mean. see there that's the noise which we don't really get in a match plane effect so that if you go to the power cluster material attributes noise right the last tab here and what you can do here is play with the setting here so try you can see we already got a smoother much smoother noise here or you can try higher and you can see this completely distorted um, material which is not good to us electric experiment with all these these are quite useful ones the electric is fine, but it's darkened the color of the material. Regular. Again, it's getting closer, but it's um, refractor. Refractor actually might be suitable for what we want more than the rest of them. So leave it at that go back to the edge um, on the color mix get rid of the black one let's see the effect there yeah immediately you say immediately we got the effect of light so um, either get rid of the color mix tab or if you had the black here on the left swap them around with the white now let's have a look Yes, what it did is now darkened the tip of the flame because the dark black is on the right. Now we start getting the look we want, but the problem with this is it's too dense. As you can see. So if you go to globals um, and density, reduce the density and start seeing the effect, say, to one point. You see the material is transparent. So the density 
will give you a transparent effect. So you need to adjust that according to how much of the stick itself you want to see through. Um, the other thing we need is luminosity because after all it is a flame and we have some kind of brightness. So you can see straight away by bringing it up to 40 or 50 percent on luminosity we, we start getting what looks like a flame now. We're very close to what we want to achieve. If you want to achieve slight lightness on top, you just go to one of the tabs here, duplicate it, and add a slightly greyish color. That will, as you slide this, you will see the material will start changing color, it's, which is what you see here. You see a slight dark ring. And if you change that drastically to almost white, it should appear. You also need to do it on the edge. Whatever you do to the material on the global, try and follow it by something similar on the edge. And now you can see there's a slight grader. Okay, we'll run a quick preview render so we actually see what we achieve and as I said uh, I'm not showing you a particular setup to how I achieved my own uh, for that reason that um, I think by experimenting yourself you will probably learn more than anyone telling you or showing you exactly what the setting need to be I think you'll find it quite intriguing and you might discover something new altogether. Okay, I'll come back when the render preview is finished and show you the result. On the render, uh, the flame is just not big enough. We probably need to enlarge the flame a little bit so it's almost reaching the end of the charred stick here and maybe make it longer but the movement is there already we can also make it um, less red on the tip maybe more yellow and this is what you get by tweaking the settings that I showed you the age tabs here of the colors and the globals and between them you will get the desired effect well, let's just go to shape but if you once you achieved the teardrop shape or whatever shape you want for your flame uh, if you just want to increase the size um, make sure you don't touch any of the other setting just go to reduce here on the shape tab and increase that. If the flame is lower than you want then just adjust the emitter itself. Raise, raise the emitter. You won't see the result till you actually play it. But if you raise the emitter the flame then reaches the height you want. Um, remember always what you see here with the preview it's larger than the actual render you see. The flame is always smaller than more it appears here, so make allowance for that. As you see, I've taken it too high because I was looking at the shape of the... So you can probably increase the shape slightly bigger than you want because it will actually, if I do a render now, it looks huge. But if you do a render, you can see the render actual flame is smaller you see so these adjustments are quite important and just make sure you do adjustment here for the overall shot size if you want to change the shape then go to age and adjust 
the reduce colors left to right according to what shape you want if you want want something is completely different for different this same flame you can use by adjusting the colors to say blue that could be a gas flame um, and if you wanted a candle um, you're basically there you might want to do the, the flame slightly longer um, that can be achieved in two ways uh, one by going to a meter and slightly changing the lifetime and you can see straight away if I change the lifetime the flame gets much longer I'll exaggerate here you can see so the lifetime will give you the length as well as affect your shape slightly the material itself on the age tab will adjust the shape as you can see exaggerating here more pointy at the top or almost rounded at the top so this is the adjustment you need to play with and for colors again just play with this say this is too orangey change it to yellow just see the effect till you get the desire you might want green flame or blue flame or anything um, and for as I said for um, transparency adjust it here whether you go below one give you a very also those transparency as you can see affect the brightness and the size of your flame so be careful with that as you go up in density you get a brighter flame so that's basically it um, don't forget at the end of this tutorial I'll put a speeded up um, clip of how I uh, created the and model the matchstick itself and the material on it. Thank you for watching my tutorial and keep an eye for my uh, next flame tutorial.